I appreciate the call by Representative John Shimkus of Illinois that theologians would enter into debate about the environmental crisis. Scripture is relevant, and we should include our theological voices in responding to this problem. I say yes to his call to conversation, yes to his concern about the well-being of persons, and yes to the role of Scripture. But surely the way to bring Christian voices into the debate about environmental legislation is not to cite two scriptures and then to tell us that that is the Christian answer. To be short-sighted enough to think only about present job cuts and not about the long-term impact of the environment is surely not the way to have a Christian guide to ecological legislation. You notice that Representative Shimkus appeals to the Noah's Ark uh, passage in Genesis 8 and to a Matthew 24 passage, one of the many apocalypse passages. But these actually are judgments, God's judgment on our sin. We do face the consequences in Scripture for the actions that we carry out. There is no promise that humans, or a meteor for that matter, cannot finish off the planet. The promise is about the long-term relationship of humans with God through Christ. More disturbing even than his proof texting of scripture is his easy-go-lucky uh, use of science. He suggests to us that there might have been a particulate matter of 4,000 parts per million at the time of the dinosaurs, but we would have a clear geological record if the particulate matter had ever been so high. We are not a carbon-starved planet, and to fly in the face of every bit of evidence about the atmosphere and the history of the atmosphere is just irresponsible. If that's what the Christian voice is in environmental studies, we're definitely on different planets. Yes, let's include the role of science. Yes, let's speak as theologians and biblical scholars to the environmental crisis. But please, let's read the passages in context. Let's engage in sophisticated Christian discussion about the theological implications of the passages. And let's, with those in mind, take a long-term perspective. We do need ecological, environmental legislation. We do need Christian voices to make calls for that. Let's engage as a church in powerful, informed debate on the nature of the environmental crisis and the nature of God's promises about the planet and about its inhabitants. Let's not end the debate with uh, the appeal to two uh, passages in infallible scripture and leave it at that. So, Representative Shimkus, thank you for the call to debate. To debate. I hope you will now join us in something more sophisticated than what you've offered in your House testimony.